in your point. You should be live. Okay. Hey, everyone. Uh, hopefully, we're live now. I know it takes sometimes a few seconds uh, for everything to uh, get going. Hopefully, you can hear me. Uh, if you can't, please just let me know. Uh, but thanks for joining me on this YouTube Live. Uh, this is an intermittent fasting Q&A. You can also ask just general questions about weight loss. Uh, I walk six miles a day, so sometimes people have questions about that. Um, and so who am I? My name is Kayla Cox. Uh, I'm the owner of this channel, Six Miles to Supper, which pretty much describes how I lost weight. I went um, from being obese, 222.2 pounds, all the way down to a normal BMI, um, which for me, I got into the normal BMI about 154. Uh, and uh, I'm, right now I maintain in the 140s, that's my goal uh, during maintenance. So, uh, and how I did that was I did intermittent fasting six days a week, which for me, uh, for the bulk of the time was OMAD, which is one meal a day. And I also walked six miles every day, just at a slow pace. And I would do that um, seven days a week when I was losing the bulk of my weight, but I've switched since then to doing six days a week. I've done six days a week uh, for walking for about a year now, I believe. So I like to tweak things uh, sometimes as I go along. Uh, I try to do everything in a very laid back, sustainable way. I eat all the foods. I have no forbidden foods. I eat relatively uh, I would say relatively high carb, um, just eat normal foods. I do not do keto, I do not count calories. So uh, if you have questions, please do pop them into the, uh, the chat there and my husband will feed them over to me and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Um, also, I have a podcast called Six Miles Supper Podcast. Uh, you can find that wherever you get your podcast. And what else? I've made 170 plus videos on YouTube, so uh, there's a lot of resources there. Uh, I just share my experiences because I had a, a lifetime struggle with weight. And so um, intermittent fasting was finally the thing that worked for me that was like, wow, I could do this forever, I feel like, and it doesn't feel hard. It feels actually easy. Um, so there you go. I've also wrote a book um, called The Laidback Guide to Intermittent Fasting. If you're interested in that, like if you feel like I just need something to hold in my hands and refer to, um, that was all about my journey. And so uh, there you go. So uh let's see let's get into some questions uh first of all roger haber i wanted to give a shout out to him he has lost 40 pounds so far um and that's just fantastic so congratulations robert uh roger and he he made a comment and said the last 10 pounds seem to be the hardest and that is so true um i'll, I'll just give you some of my experiences on that so in 2016 uh that's really when i lost the bulk of my weight so like 2015 was a year where I worked really hard, but I was not consistent at all. And I only lost maybe like 15 pounds and I was starting to regain the weight. And I was ready to give up because I was so frustrated because I was working so hard. Um, and then in 2016 though, I got really consistent intermittent fasting. I like wrote down this really simple plan, intermittent fasting six days a week, cheat day on Sunday, walk six miles every day. And that brought me down all the way to like 150, I think 157 or so and I got down to that point it was right before the holidays and I was like I feel really good right here I feel really comfortable and so my weight loss didn't really slow down like I just kind of got to that point and it was, it was a little bit higher than what I thought I wanted to stop at but but I was really trying to pay attention how do I actually feel like what you know am I feeling good about my body am I feeling good about like where I'm at and I really did so I thought I want to see if I can maintain this because that's where I always failed obviously with weight loss was I could usually get it off but then I would just regain it all plus some so so I spent the like next year just maintaining that and then I decided okay you know like I was I was like maybe three pounds uh overweight I mean I guess technically speaking with BMI it was it kind of depended on where I was in maintenance because I I was trying to maintain in like a five pound range so from like 150 uh 7 158 to like maybe what 163 I think that's kind of where I was maintaining so it depends on kind of where I started I can't quite remember off the top of my head but um but the point is I thought okay I really do want to get down into the normal BMI like which was 154 for me like once I hit that normal BMI I was like okay that's going to be my goal and so um that took a lot longer uh, I was doing this channel and so you can you can go back I would do like monthly maintenance or I mean monthly uh, progress reports and I would just 
uh, document like how much weight did I lose that month and uh, it was a very slow process it was like on average uh, a third of a pound a week and that was to get me from like so that would have been like maybe like from like let's say 158 down to like one I think it was like 142 and then I said okay I'm it started to feel like I'm just I'm losing weight yeah but I don't really it doesn't really feel different to me there's a huge difference to me between being obese and then getting into like close to the normal BMI there was much less of a difference in how I felt and how I felt about the way I looked and all that stuff like once I started to get down the, to the normal BMI so my point is if you find that you are getting near the normal BMI you may find that your weight loss really slows down a lot which can make those last 10 pounds like if you if, you, if those last 10 pounds are near the normal BMI like maybe the lower end of overweight on BMI um, it's just been my experience and I've heard a lot of other people with the same kind of experience that it just gets really slow um, I think you know my own personal theory is it's like well your body doesn't you know need to lose that weight it's like we're good here and so um, I think I think your body just kind of starts to say all right I think you're good here and so uh, I try to listen to that so uh, yeah so there you go hopefully uh, that helps you uh, and another thing that can happen too is like when you get close to achieving a goal you can get impatient I'm not saying that you are Roger I struggle with patience a lot and so uh, what helped me to try to not be so impatient was I keep track of my weight. I weigh every single day. I keep track of my seven day average. And um, so I've got this spreadsheet now that I've kept, I, I mean, I still do it. So it started like in 2015 or so that I started keeping track of this. And so I started to see like, okay, how quickly really am I losing weight? And once, once I started to see like, when I had the bulk of the weight to lose, it was like a pound a week. That helped me to be more patient. Even though it felt slower, I was like, okay, no, this is, not any slower than normal I'm just getting down to that point like where I'm about to hit the goal uh, and then it was very helpful when I was losing weight so slowly when I was in the normal BMI it was like okay a third of a pound a week so like so then what that meant for me was like so basically like each month I should kind of expect as long as I'm being very consistent my average will be one pound lower than the previous month so uh, which you know it's still tough but uh, Anyway, so hopefully that um, that helps. Uh, Kim Bowers asked, uh, "Oh, incorporating breads into your diet?" Well, okay. So um, I, like I said, I eat all foods, and I eat. I love bread. I love bread, and I love pasta and fruit, and you know, I love I love to bake and to eat dessert. Although I don't. Um, so once I started al allowing myself, like you can have whatever you want whenever you want just just try not to overeat so in other words like eat to the point where I'm satisfied and then stop eating um, this weird thing happened where I stopped like having these overwhelming cravings for sweet things now again I still love like Oreos brownies cookies I love to bake too so uh, I still eat those things but it was just a weird kind of thing that happened it was like counterintuitive so um, so you're asking about incorporating them so I I started out like in, in tw especially in 2016 that's when I got very clear on this idea I'm gonna allow myself everything um, but it sounds like maybe you have not been allowing yourself any bread and so you're thinking like how do I incorporate this back in so I would say what I what I've kind of seen with people generally speaking is they'll they'll kind of get super paranoid about the bread and think the bread's causing me to gain weight like I can't eat bread and lose weight and I think that's not true I think you really can um, uh, lose weight and uh, while you're eating all the foods I, I did that like I, just to give you like an idea of you know uh, well I do I did document for like a week of my eating uh, and Jay if you could put that um, in a link like intermittent fasting meal plan <laughs> people always want a meal plan I'm like I just eat everything um, but just to give you an idea of, of kind of the, the amounts of foods I was eating and what I was eating um, but if, if you just I think if you just say I'm going to learn how to eat these things I'm gonna learn how to have all these things in in my life um, 
And then, you know, you can start to notice, like, and this has happened for a lot of people that I've spoken to, once they said, okay, bread, bread's not off limits. It's just like, eat whatever you want. They begin to have self-control around bread. And, and I don't mean like, and you only can have one piece. That's not what I mean. What I mean is, when it's not off limits, it's, it's not like you have an inordin inordinate amount of, like, desire for bread, if that makes sense. Um, so I would, if I were you, I would just say, I can have bread whenever I want, and I'm just going to be really patient with myself and try not to overeat and just really, you know, be patient, um, with the whole process. Um, and, uh, and you know, it, it's again, for me, the reason why I, I made that decision in 2016, I really said in 2015, I'm not going on another diet, but then I did struggle with like, well, you know, maybe I should do macros and stuff like that. I had a really hard time with all that. Um, so, but what I decided was, you know, I want, I want to just be, I want to be able to eat whatever I want. Uh, I want to eat the same stuff my family's eating. And I felt like that was really, in the long term, the most sustainable thing. Like, the idea of, I'm just not going to eat bread, <laughs> like, that's just not going to work for me. Um, so, uh, just being honest with myself and then saying, it, you know, it, even if it takes a long time, it would be better to take a long time, but then learn how to eat all the foods, rather than, in the short term, be able to, like, banish bread out of my diet, but then eventually I go back to eating it, and then eventually I gain all the weight back, which was my pattern before. So hopefully that helps. Just start eating it, is what would be my advice. Uh, Wildlife Cam uh, says, how do I know if I should break my fast? I have not lost weight fasting, but I'm doing the 16 hours. Should I go longer uh, with the fasting window? And when I break it, I'm not eating much. Okay, so first of all, wildlife. The, the first question I would have is, do you actually need to lose weight? That's always my first question because some people assume they need to lose weight and they really don't. Um, I don't know if you're male or female, females especially, uh, in my experience, like they can be at a perfectly healthy weight and they just have it in their head. Like I really am, you know, they'll say I'm fat or, or yeah, I'm really overweight and really the numbers s s tell a different story. Um, okay. But let's say, you know, and, and, and for those of you out there who are like, I'm not really sure because some women, uh, uh like struggle with body dysmorphia, uh, which is like when you look in the mirror and you think you look really fat, but in reality, you're at a perfectly healthy weight. Um, or maybe you could even be underweight. Um, uh, if uh, you are like, I don't really know, then weigh yourself uh, and take your height and put it into a BMI calculator. It's a, it is a very simple calculation and no, it is not the perfect calculation. Like, I, I, like people will immediately say, well, it's not, you know, it doesn't tell the whole story. You're right, it doesn't. But it at least gives you kind of an idea. Like, are you kind of in the ballpark of a healthy weight? Or are you, you know, like way out of bounds? And so, but let's say that you find that really you are very overweight or obese. So yes, then it's like, yeah, you, you need to lose some weight, right? So um, you didn't say how, how long you have been doing a 16 hour fast, how consistently. The, first, the second thing I would check is how consistent have you been with it? and really be honest with yourself about consistency. Like sometimes what will happen is people be like, well, I'm doing a 16-8, but when you go over it with them, they're like, well, but not that day. I, I took that day off and I ate a little bit later, like in the fasting window and a little bit earlier. And I would do, I would do that the same kind of thing too when I was first like getting uh, used to intermittent fasting or kind of experimenting with it. I would think, well, I'm doing a 16-8, but when I would really look back, I'd think, oh, well, Actually, that day was like a 12 hour fast and you know, like it, it, it can happen where you're just not being that consistent. Um, but if you have been, let's say you have been super consistent for six weeks um, with your plan and it's been a 16 hour fast and you're just not losing weight and you really do need to lose weight, you still have options. Um, aside from going on like with a longer fasting window, that's a doable option uh, if it works in your life. Some people do really well with that, like a, you know, 17, 18 hour fast. I, you know, I found OMAD worked really well in my life, um, but not everybody is like that. Some people really uh, want uh, the, the longer, 
eating window. Uh, it works better with their life, their family life maybe, or their, their business life, work life. Um, and so if uh, you kind of like where you're at with your fasting window, I would say um, you have some things that you can try. Uh, for me, one thing that I learned over time was that snacking was generally emotional eating for me. So I wasn't really hungry. I was just bored or upset, um, stressed out, worried, you know, like fill in the blank with all the negative emotions you may feel. Like I would just, if I was feeling that way, I'd go eat, uh, snack around, just snack, snack, snack. And that grazing, um, in that I, w I realized like, wow, I was really eating a lot, not really feeling like I was eating very much, but once I, once I kind of started to see, oh, I'm doing that because I'm stressed, I, I, I worked very hard on stopping that habit. So, because uh, what would happen is, like in the fasting window, this would happen. I would feel like really hungry out of the blue. I'd be like, why am I hungry right now? Like I normally don't eat right now, so why am I feeling this way? And I would realize, oh, I'm feeling stressed out right now, and my habit has been to just eat, but I'm in my fasting window right now, so I can't eat. And so then that got me into the habit of like figuring out what am I upset about? Um, how can I take some sort of action um, that will maybe make the situation better? And then that habit went into the eating window when I would be like in my eating window and let's say I opened up my eating window, let's say at like two o'clock and I ate something. And then let's say it's like four o'clock and all of a sudden I'm feeling hungry. Like what's up with that? Because I really shouldn't be hungry two hours later. Um, and then I would realize like, oh, I'm doing that same thing where I'm stressed out about something. So instead of eating, I am going to, uh, you know, like uh, figure out what I can do about this thing that's stressing me out. Sometimes that was just going for a walk. Um, that was always helpful. But um, so, uh, so. He did say he's a male. Yes, he does need to lose. Okay. He does it five days a week. Okay. Um, stops eating at 8 p.m. and then breaks the fast at noon. Okay. All right. So, um, so yeah. So I would look at. Are you snacking? And if you are snacking, try not snacking. Like, so instead of that, yeah, I still want you to be full. Like, so eating uh, a, a good meal to open up and a good meal to, to close it out. Um, also, uh, look at distracted eating too. Like, are you eating in front of a screen? So even maybe like, maybe you're just eating your meals, but you're like watching TV or on social media. Like I, I, I try to, with a few exceptions, because we do date night and stuff like that, I try to never eat in front of a screen or have any devices around while I'm eating, just because it's so easy for me to kind of zone out and just stuff my face. Even to this day, I still uh, have to be very, very careful about that. Um, and then, uh, let's see. And just, so again, being really consistent. And did he mention how long has he been consistent? For how long? No, but he says he's not snacking at all. Okay, that's good. Um, so if yeah. you could tell us how... Ask if, yeah. if anybody loses weight on a 16-8. Yeah, okay, I can answer that for sure. Yes, I've talked to lots of people who have lost weight on 16-8. And in fact, that's usually when people start to have results. And some clarification said, oh, okay, no snacking during the eating window. Yeah, right. yeah, okay. Okay, so maybe, maybe that's a part of it for you. Um, and, and being very patient with the weight loss. Like I said, I lost on average a pound a week and that was doing OMAD. So that was, um, pretty, you know, like a very, very short, I mean, that's basically a 24 hour fast every day, uh, or maybe like 23 hours. Okay. And so, and so you've been doing that for a month. Okay. So, um, so one month being very consistent, you know, m you know, it depends on how much you have to lose and how consistent you're being. Um, I would say if like a pound a week is, is what you what would be a good goal. Um, but some people lose slower than that. Uh, some people lose quicker, but not everybody. So I would say, look at the snacking, um, be consistent. And sometimes people's bodies just take a bit to, to really get going with the weight loss thing. Your body does want to hang on to, I mean, it's trying to help you survive, right? Like that's the whole point is your body's built so that if you're intaking excess calories, it wants to hold on to it, like, okay, for, for a time of famine, we're gonna, you know, survive longer. So um, I try to remind myself that too. It's a, it, it is just, in a way, a very simple equation. If, if the weight is not going down, it means you're eating 
either, if, if the weight is just staying the same, then you're eating just the right amount to maintain where you're at. If your weight is going up, you're eating a surplus. And if you are going down, uh, then you are eating the right amount so that your weight can decrease. So um, I try not to overthink it past that. It, it's very easy to try to overthink it, but um, yeah, the, I would say look at the snacking and then and see, see how that works for you. Okay, uh, hopefully that helps you. Um, Arden, oh, because you said you were not eating much, but the snacking I think can really add up on you. Okay, um, or at least that's been my experience. Okay, let me take a quick sip of water. Okay, ah, Ashley, sorry, sorry, Arden Ashley Wortman said, do you have a graph of your weight loss journey, either actual weights or the seven day average that you put on your website? I do have that somewhere on my website. I wish I could remember. It might be under uh, like my story, my journey. I can't remember, but um, I do have that. And like I said, it was a, you know, I can, I can, I can at least show you with my fingers what it looked like. It looked like this, like, you know, that was, that's the way it goes. You know, everybody wants the, you know, that's not, even with the seven day average, that is not the way it was. I mean, it's still like this, you know? And the thing about the seven day average was it was helpful uh, in that it didn't make uh, me despair too quickly if I had like high higher weight day. You know, cause sometimes my weight has gone up as much as like, I think, has it gone up? I think it's gone like five pounds overnight before. Like just, you know, if I drank a lot of water or something like that, I ate really salty foods. Um, and then, uh, it, but it also helped me to not celebrate too quickly if I had one low weight day. Um, because sometimes that happens too. Like you, you know, maybe you don't drink as much or you sweat a lot and you can think, oh wow, I lost a couple of pounds. And then, you know, the next day it's like, oh, I gained a pound. And then that can get really like kind of frustrating, like how did I, like what am I doing? Am I really gaining or am I losing or, you know, am I staying the same? And, but the, the seven day average over time can help. Um, so hopefully Jay was able to find that graph. If not, um, I don't even know. I, I do know that at one point I had it on the website, but um, maybe I, I can uh, try to remember to make a post of that and, and put it on there. Uh, and I do have the, uh, if you need a spreadsheet that will track your seven day average, that's available on my website under uh, freebies, uh, sixmilesofsupper.com slash freebies. Um, okay, Kathy uh, Davey, going to check out your podcast. Oh, great. Uh, walk 20, wow, 20,000 steps on a good day when it's not too hot. Wow, that's a lot of steps. I do um, 14,000, that's six miles for me uh, with my stride length. So uh, that's, that's awesome, Kathy. Uh, I'm glad uh, that you're a fellow stepper. Um, let's see, Inus Moonlight uh, said, lost 80 pounds last year on keto and oh man, thanks to you. Oh great, started to allow myself everything back in maintenance. Uh, if not for you, I would have suffered on keto. <laughs> oh great, uh, walking six miles listening. Thanks again for your videos. Well, that is awesome, Inus. That is, um, uh, I mean, 80 pounds, that is super great. Uh, if you'd ever like to be interviewed on my channel, uh, you can um, uh, send me an email at Kayla at six miles to supper .com, um, And I can send you a form if you want to be on. I know not everybody likes to be on camera and uh, it's also tough to share your weight loss journey. It puts more pressure on it. Uh, but if you ever want to, uh, to, to be interviewed, just uh, send, send me an email. Uh, and for just FYI for other people out there, uh, my email is on an autoresponder, and so I can't respond to every single email. Uh, my schedule just doesn't allow for it. Um, but um, anyway, so there you go. But if, but if you want qu your questions answered, this is a great place. This is why I do the intermittent fasting Q and A, so that people can ask their questions, um, and then that way everybody can hear uh, the answer too. So uh, there you go. Um, let's see. Kim Bowers ask. Uh, Dealing with cotton mouth metal taste while fasting. That's an interesting question. That's one of those things that people ask about a lot and I just don't experience it. Um, I don't even feel very thirsty. Uh, like when I'm fasting, when I'm doing OMAD consistently even, uh, like 
I just drink the normal amount of water. I don't push fluids, which maybe which that could possibly be different than what some people do. I know some people are like they really want to like they have water goals, right? And they'll like just they're just drinking lots and lots of water. I don't do that. I just drink whenever I feel thirsty. I just obey my thirst. Um, and so that might be different. Um, now the metallic thing, I have not um, experienced. Some people have also asked me about bad breath uh, when they're when they're fasting. To my knowledge, I've not experienced that. I always do ask Jay, like, um, does my breath stink or anything? Because I, I because it's such a common question. Um, so I I always want to ask, but I, I've not experienced that. I think. I think some people have said that might be uh, because you're in um, oh man, keti ketosis, right? So, um, but I don't know. And I don't track that either. Like, I've never done the little uh, test strips or anything. I, I do not know. Because um, sometimes people ask me that, like, well, when, when do you enter the, you know, whatever, ketosis? I have no idea. Um, okay. Uh, so hopefully that helps you, Kim. Uh, Sherry says, I do a 16-8 uh, uh, intermittent fasting, coffee at 10 a.m., dinner at 6 p.m. Dinner can be uh, more than 1,200 calories. Do you feel that isn't effective or healthy? I, let's see, do I, <laughs> I'm trying to understand. Do you feel that isn't effective or healthy? Uh, well, I can only tell you my experience, which is, um, so when I do OMAD, then I'm certainly eating, gosh, I don't know how many calories it is, but I would say it's, at least in the neighborhood of 1200. I mean, I would think again, I don't, I don't really count it at all ever. Um, but I would imagine I am, I'm kind of eating in that range. Uh, maybe, maybe it's more than that. I really don't know. Um, you, if you're really curious, you could see like that meal plan, what, uh, where I like documented how much I was eating at, you know, my meals, you could maybe get a kind of a general idea of how many calories I was eating, but do I think it's healthy? And do I think it is effective? Okay, so I'll take the effective thing. Because is it healthy? That healthy has such a, such an, like, it's so broad. <laughs> and I hesitate, because I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nurse, I'm not, I'm not a nutritionist, anything like that. I can only tell you how I have felt um, and how my health has been while doing all of this stuff. So back, you know, when I was obese, I was, obese and I couldn't breathe well, like when I would lay down on my back. And so I'm eating, you know, at the meals, I'm not eating these like a bigger, well, I don't, I don't know how big my meals were, but they were, I would say it was more like more regular size meals, but it'd be like three meals plus lots of snacks during the day. And so, so a lot more calories overall, but spread out more. Um, and so, you know, like I was saying, I was, uh, you know, having trouble breathing on my back. Um, I was, you know, like just not able to move, uh, as well as I wanted to be able to move. Um, and so, and just, uh, just not feeling great and, uh, felt tired all the time too. Okay. So she did say that she, she just wasn't sure if eating too much at one meal. Mm -hmm. was bad. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and because this is something, you know, I wondered about, I was like, well, you know, I don't know. It's like a, it's a big meal. But I can tell you this, like, so since doing OMAD, and I do, I, do, I still do OMAD really frequently. Uh, it kind of depends on what's going on in my life. Uh, just depends, uh, and I, and that's something I've learned in maintenance. Like sometimes life is very different, and you kind of have to just roll with it. And so, uh, so sometimes it's OMAD pretty consistently. Uh, sometimes it's more like two meals a day or so. Um, so, is it effective? To me, yes, it's, it's very effective to, to do it that way. Um, a big a big meal, uh, and even if it's tw you know 1,200 calories or whatever, I still have found uh, that you lose weight. And to me, that's what effective means. Like when you're trying to lose weight, is that effective? Yes. Um, now, if you find that that's too much, then then you'll have to eat less uh, than that the meal. But as far as health wise, I feel so much healthier now as compared to back then. So I'm eating, you know, what maybe some people say, well, that's a, that's a big meal to have. Uh, you may be getting all, basically all of my calories in one short period of time, but, uh, I feel great. I don't get sick often at all. Um, uh, I move around and feel, you know, wonderful. 
uh, I just went to the dentist and I hadn't been for three years, uh, which was bad. I should, I should not have waited that long, but I didn't have any cavities and I, you know, it's healthy. So there you go. It's like, to me, those are good markers of having good health. So, uh, hopefully that helps you. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Maria Adnan or Adnan, uh, said, do you give up sugar? No. Um, I did stop drinking sugar in my coffee. Um, I, as a general rule, I don't like drink like sugary sodas. So I, I do love bubbly drinks like um, the unsweetened uh, sodas like LaCroix, Clear American unsweetened. I don't do fake sugar either in, in my drinks because uh, it just gives me a stomach ache. So, um, but uh, like, I, but I don't have a rule for my, I just want to make it clear. I do not have a rule that I can't have soda. So like if we're out somewhere and like, I feel like, Hey, I want a Dr. Pepper. I'm going to have the Dr. Pepper and I'm not going to feel guilty about it either. Um, but yeah, I stopped having sugar in my coffee though, because I thought I had a suspicion that it would make fasting easier. And I think that it did. That was back in like 2015. I started out with like a tablespoon of sugar in my coffee and lots of half and half. And then I just slowly worked my way down. I'd like have two teaspoons and then I had one teaspoon and then a half a teaspoon. And I just worked it out really slowly. And it did seem to make fasting easier. Um, and, uh, but I still kept the half and half in it. And, um, and otherwise though, I did not try to limit sugar. I just said, you know, I'm going to be very, um, consistent with my fasting window and then in my eating window I can eat whatever I want and that really helped me to be consistent with the fasting window I think and then well I can tell you for 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 sure because I know myself really well like if I had told myself well you have to be very strict during the fasting window and though once you get to your eating window you can't have dessert and you need to cut out sugar like I just wouldn't have stuck with it so it wouldn't have been enough motivation for me but uh, you know, but I did find I can be highly motivated by food, <laughs> so which I have to also be careful with, uh, just not motivating myself with food in general. But to get myself consistent with the fasting window, it was like okay, as long as I know that I can eat what I want when the fast when the eating window opens up, it helped me to be consistent. Uh, Gypsy Sky walking ten miles a day and eating mostly raw, all vegan, no junk, and the scale has barely budged. Measurements stay the same. Also, why? So Gypsy, uh, my question to you would be, do you really need to lose weight? Um, are you very overweight to obese or are you more in the normal BMI? Um, uh, if, uh, let's see, if you do find that you are obese, um, and let's say, Andrew, let's say eating mostly raw, vegan, and no junk. Um, I mean, I suppose, and I don't, I don't have any, I don't have any, uh, experience with vegan, but, um, ultimately you can have a surplus of calories on any type of food intake, right? I mean, like we are, essentially we are animals, right? And so, uh, a cow, you know, can eat grass and can, grow large enough to, you know, like to, to put on weight and stuff is my point. Uh, it's all, it all comes down to calories. I would be surprised that you could eat like, uh, like, I don't know, vegan from what I've seen is very like lots of just low calorie kinds of things. But I suppose if you're eating a lot of pasta and stuff, that would be a, something to maybe look at. Like how many, how many calories are you actually intaking? Um, because if the, if the scale, let's see, well, you said it's barely budged, which means it is going down a little bit, probably. But um, if the scale is staying the same, then you're eating enough to just maintain your weight. Um, so I would, you know, I would, I would look at how much, you know, you, if I don't like counting calories, but if you're really stuck as to like, you think, well, I'm, I'm not eating, you know, like a surplus at all, and I should be losing then you know, you could try counting the calories of what you're actually eating and you know like do that for a week just to see uh you may be eating more than you think um 
I, I did count calories in 2015 uh, for a while and it drove me crazy. But one thing that it did show me, there, there was a learning experience there. I didn't realize how quickly things added up. Um, it was an eye opener because I had always thought before, before I really did that, I thought I don't really eat that much. Like I, I, don't, I don't know what the big deal is. Like I'm just not eating that 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 much food. But when I really counted the calories, I realized like wow, I really was eating a lot of calories. So, uh, so hopefully that helps you. Um, uh, Allie, since the last live stream, I've dropped four pounds after uh, only losing one pound in three weeks on Nomad, on the higher end of normal BMI. Keep on keeping on. That's awesome, Allie. Yeah. See, and that happens too. Like sometimes you can be like plateauing and then you just have a dip, right? And so that's, that is great. That is, um, congratulations, Allie. Good for sticking with it. Good on you for sticking with it. Um, let's see. Lore, uh, Lori M. Ipsum. <laughs> Uh, Lauren uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, I never gave much thought to the actual distance I walked, but I just realized I've been walking 6.5, 6.5 miles a day now. Had to laugh when I calculated it and you've lost almost, uh, or you've lost 48 pounds. Well, congratulations. That is great. And you've been walking six and a half miles a day. That is, that's fantastic. I like walking six miles a day. is just, it's so, it's such a stress reliever to me. Like it's, uh, I don't know how how many calories it ends up burning because I feel like it probably makes me hungrier and stuff. But it, I just I don't know. There's just something special about it. So uh, that's that's great. And congratulations on losing 48 pounds. Uh, if you don't mind, could you share how long did that take you uh, to lose 48 pounds? Because um, I'm just always curious, and I, and I think it helps people to to just know like kind of timelines and stuff. Um, Let's see, Ashley Arden Wortman asked, uh, when you got down to 157, were you still losing one pound a week or was that one third a pound per week? I got confused when it slowed down. Okay, yeah, so was it when I went from 157 down to 142? Yes, so to my recollection, it didn't really slow down uh, in 2016. That's when I went from like 205 down to 157. Um, as far as I can remember, I did, it didn't. Um, but it was just like, it was in November, and I was like, I'm feeling really good, and I think I should just stop, because <laughs> we're going into Christmas, and just like, let me see if I can maintain it. Because I, I really thought, maintenance will be easier than trying to lose weight during Christmas time, so let me just see how it goes. And so that's what I did. And then it was about a year, because I really wanted to maintain and see if I could keep it off, and I did. And so I started the YouTube channel in 2017, I think. Yeah, 20, is that right? Yeah, yeah, 27, the end of 2017. And, um, and so at that point, that's when I went back, because during maintenance, I should have clarified that, during maintenance, that first time, I was very loosey-goosey. Like, I would eat two meals a day sometimes. Sometimes I'd eat three meals a day. Sometimes I would not do my steps. Um, I learned I need to do my steps because <laughs> I'd get grumpy. And, I and like, it was just, like, I. it's good to have that thing that you're doing. Like, and for me, now that's six days a week. But, like, just to have that daily kind of a goal was really good for, for like, my, my, my mood, mental health, all that good stuff. So... So then though I said, okay, I've got this YouTube channel that, you know, like I've uploaded a video and I thought, you know, I'm technically like three pounds overweight in the, um, uh, on BMI. So I really like, I, it was a, it was a dumb kind of like train of thought. I think in the, like in retrospect, I was really thinking I can't have a video about weight loss if I'm still technically overweight. So I thought, well, I just, I need to go ahead and see if I can lose down to 154. Um, and so I started to work on that. Like I went back to doing uh, OMAD six days a week, cheat day on Sunday, walking six miles every day. And that's when I started to lose at a pound, oh, sorry, at one third of a pound a week. So it was a very, very <laughs> slow, well, what I consider very slow weight loss. Um, so it took me, I think, like basically a year to get down uh, to to the like to 140, 
two or so. I think that's right. Um, so yeah, so hopefully, hopefully that clarifies that. Okay, let's see. Can... I want to thank a super chat Oh, user. thank you, super chat user. But I can't read their name. Oh, it's no. A different language. Oh, <laughs> it, it, I think it's in Arabic. Right. And I can't read Arabic, but thank you. That was so nice. Thank you so much. Um, awesome. Uh, let's see. So, Cadcar13 asked, um, do you know if OMAD will help with weight gain during perimenopause? Uh, I know you're just a youngster, <laughs> but I uh, wondered if you had clients with good results. Love your books and you sharing. Well, okay. Well, thanks. First of all, that was so nice. I'm glad you liked my books. Um, and let's see. So, um, okay. Well, so I'm 36, right? <laughs> I get confused. I get so yes. confused. Yeah, I, I'm gonna be 37 in November. So um, sometimes uh, it's hard to tell, I guess, on videos like how old people are. But so that's coming. I don't know. I don't know exactly when perimenopause starts, but I'm sure it's not too far from now. Um, but you know, the thing with hormonal things and with stressful things is it, it does make it harder. I mean, I, I think, uh, here's what I do know. I've talked with people, interviewed people, uh, coached people also from all different age groups and like from, you know, the, the, there've been people like in their seventies, even I think eighties who have emailed me saying they've lost weight. Okay. So it's, so it's not just like you get to this certain point in life and you can't lose weight anymore. Um, and you know, lots of women who are going through menopause and, and, and that kind of thing. Uh, it is, uh, I would say here, here's, here's what I, I have a suspicion about. Um, I, I do think it's possible no matter what kind of stage of life you're in to lose weight. Um, hormones do make a difference, but I don't think that they can really, st I, 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 I'm a hundred percent confident. They can't stop you from losing weight, uh, because ultimately your body will drop weight. Uh, if you are not eating enough food to maintain, like it, it, it's not a miracle worker. In other words, like your body will lose weight. Um, but I think, um, and this is just based on my own, like when I have been uh, hormone, like, well, around my period of time, certainly that makes, uh, intermittent fasting, you know, a bit more difficult because you can just be more emotional. I had some struggles with, um, what I think, I never was diagnosed, but with, um, uh, PMDD, which is like premenstrual dysphoria disorder, which is like, I would get really down like a couple of, a few days before my period. And it was just really, really tough really like the world just kind of turned gray. And uh, that makes like wanting to do, you know, do your miles <laughs> and things like that really tough. It can also make wanting to eat, uh, you know, like stick to your fasting window really difficult too. And there can just be other emotional things. So even if you're being consistent with your windows, right? You're, you're not eating during your fasting window and you're only eating during your eating window. You know, if you're feeling emotional, and stressed out or just, you know, feeling hormonal, uh, it can be really easy to, um, eat, uh, more <laughs> than you should, uh, like overeat or, um, or just to, even to just kind of be kind of scatterbrained. Like I, I've also experienced that where, or just have a, a bigger appetite and you're eating more and it's like, what well, I'm not eating. It feels like I'm not overeating. I'm like eating to, uh, satiation, but yet the scale's still moving up. So to me, the thing I always look at is if the scale's moving up, I'm eating too much, whether it feels like it or not, I really am. And I try to take some steps to remedy that. And for me, uh, what has been helpful again, the big one is no distracted eating. So, uh, no, no, uh, watching TV, no having my phone at the table, um, being, trying to be very aware of my food and how fast I'm eating, I'm trying to chew my, <laughs> my food instead of just wolf it down. Um, uh, trying to, uh, be grateful for the food to pay attention to how it tastes, you know, like really just slowing myself down. Cause what I, what I have noticed for me, like, especially, you know, 
if I'm feeling hormonal or whatever, uh, I'll just sit down and like just, I can just be like shoveling in the food, not really thinking about, you know, like, or may, I'm thinking not about the food, but you know, something I'm worried about or whatever. And it can just, it can just really uh, lead to overeating. So, so yeah, so, so what I would say is I think that you can still do it. I think you gotta be really patient um, and just realize that it maybe will, it maybe will take you a bit longer uh, to lose the weight, but it's still possible. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Laura, oh, Laura Ipsum, Ipsum said, I'm kind of ashamed. It really wasn't good. Last March, something clicked in my brain, went on OMAD, keto, calorie restriction, and hiking in the woods. It took me, wow, thir uh, three months to lose 48 pounds. Uh, after losing the weight, I thought I would go off OMAD and keto, but I'm so accustomed to it now, I have no desire to. Uh, I didn't expect that. Yeah, well, that's great. That's, let's see, three, three months. That's really fast, but, but you've been able to keep it off. So that's, uh, that's really good. That's the hard part, I think, is keeping it off and finding, finding that thing that you can do forever. I think that's the important thing. So, uh, let's see. Oh, Pat Swan's in here. Hey, Pat, how are you? I hope you're doing well. I think about you often. Um, ah, so thanks for, uh, stopping by. Well, I think uh, that is it for the questions. So thank you all for being a part of this uh, live chat. Um, and oh, also I forgot to mention, um, quick shout out to Whispers Magical Children's Hospital in uh, Jinja, Uganda. They are still uh, wanting to raise money for those vital monitors uh, for their intensive care unit. They take care of um, babies in Uganda, it's just, you know, they, they don't have a lot of continuous vitals monitors. They've been able, I believe, to buy four so far with their project on DonorC. I'm not, I'm, I'm not paid by DonorC. Uh, it's just an app that I really love. It helps you to connect to workers on the ground in, in countries where, you know, there, there's poverty um, and uh, especially in the remote areas. Uh, and so uh, this, this hospital is neat. They, they try to make it a really fun environment uh, for the kids there who are going through, you know, some, some terrible diseases. So, uh, so if you'd like to, you know, give uh, some of your money somewhere and you're like, I, I want it to be a, a good project that will really affect lives, I highly recommend uh, that project on DonorC. Um, okay, so thank you guys for tuning in. We'll try to do these uh, relatively frequently. We didn't realize it had been a whole month, but it's been... Uh, there's been some schedule stuff <laughs> that have, that's been happening. But um, anyway, I uh, hope that you've enjoyed this and I will see you guys the next time we do a live.